Welcome back to Mock Draft Madness, day 14 of doing a mock draft every single day until the NFL draft. We have a little bit of news, Keenan Allen to the Bears for a fourth round pick. Does this take the Bears out of the wide receiver conversation if there's one available at nine? No, I don't necessarily think it does. I think it increases their chances of drafting an edge rusher or trading back from nine. I also wouldn't rule out... Bowers at nine. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but could you imagine that offense? Everett, Bowers, Komet, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, DeAndre Swift. Kind of crazy. And we know Shane Waldron loves to use 13 personnel, which is three tight ends on the field. And I think a lot of teams see Brock Bowers more as a slot weapon than just the tight end. Other bit of news. Minnesota Vikings have traded with the Houston Texans. The Vikings now have the 23rd pick in the first round as well as the 11th pick. In my opinion, this is just more ammunition to move up and draft a quarterback. So, here is what I think is going to happen um, or just a scenario that I think could happen. I should say that. It's a scenario I think could happen. With the fact that they were not They did not give up a first next year to move back into the first. And now they have two first-round picks this year and one next year. Let's get right into it. And as always, if you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, let me know your favorite, least favorite pick from this mock draft. Let me know trade scenarios you want me to try, players you want me to try to certain teams. I'll see if I can swing it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's go. I'll get into that scenario I was talking about in just a second. So... We're going to start off the draft here, okay? And we're going to have the Bears taking Caleb Williams. We'll have the Commanders taking Jaden Daniels. Now, I have been kind of gung-ho on the fact that the Patriots are going to take a quarterback. We all know the Patriots are pretty far away. And I thought the entry point for a quarterback like a J.J. McCarthy was going to be pick five, maybe even pick four. I could see the Cardinals possibly trading out now if the draft capital is right. But I think if you want to go get Drake May, you can't trade to four, five, or six, or seven. You have to convince the Patriots that the picks they are getting are going to be worth more than Drake May. So if you want Drake May, I think you have to get to three. I don't think you can get to four. I don't think you can get to five. The Patriots don't trade out. They're going to draft a quarterback, in my opinion. So what we're going to do here is we are going to trade with the Minnesota Vikings. They are going to give up three first-round picks. So they're going to pick swap, right? They're going to give them uh, pick 23, and they're going to give them pick the round one pick in 2025. Now, this, in my opinion, was, as a Bears fan, (laughs) I don't love that there's competency in these other GM offices, but... This is a way, if you want to move up and get Drake May at number three, to not completely kill your team in the future. Yes, you will only have a third round pick next year, but at the end of the day, well, in the first three rounds, but you can you can figure something out. Now, here's my opinion. The Vikings are really built up on defense. Um, they do need help in the cornerback room, um, but overall, their D-line is pretty decent, maybe improve the IDL, everything like that. But their offense is ready to go. Uh, Their offense is ready to go. This would be an amazing situation for a rookie quarterback. And if I'm Quezzi Adolfo Mensa, the GM for the Minnesota Vikings, I'm much more willing to take my shot on Drake May than I am on J.J. McCarthy. Because you got to remember, he didn't inherit, he inherited Kirk Cousins. Like, this is someone that he kind of has had. He has not drafted his guy yet. So, yes, this is a lot to do, but if you're a GM and you're trying to make your statement with the quarterback, you have to give up what's needed. And I think this will get the Patriots to move off of pick number three. That's three firsts. Three firsts to move back, what, eight spots? So we're going to force this trade through. And now the Minnesota Vikings are going to take Drake May. At number four, we have the Arizona Cardinals. This is going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. At five, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, I still do think this is an entry point for the Broncos to move up and get J.J. I really do think that. 
And with the Giants signing Drew Locke, I don't know if JJ is on the board here. I know JJ would sit, and I know it's just, I believe it's just a one-year deal for Locke, maybe a two-year deal. But I feel like the next entry point after five is probably seven uh, with the Titans. The issue is the Broncos don't have much to give up. That's the problem. Um, or the Bron- Yeah, the Broncos don't have much to give up. So I still think this is O-line or trade back or receiver. But since... They traded Keenan Allen. They don't have Mike Williams. I think they need to go neighbors here. I don't know if that's what they're going to do, though. So I'm going to give Malik neighbors to the, the Chargers because they need weapons for Justin Herbert. And now we're at number six with the New York Giants. So, I guys, the, the last you know couple days has been awesome. Um, and, you know, this has traded this has moved so much around free agency and the trades have moved so much around and that is what is so fun about this time of year is there's so many different scenarios that don't exist in a week because all these things change so now we're with the new york giants okay and i think i don't know man i just don't buy the jj hype to the giants right now i think it's possible but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Rome Odunze. So now we have an interesting spot here. I think the Broncos definitely make a lot of sense here. So I am going to give them first this year, third this year, and second next year. And we're going to force that trade through. And the Broncos are on the clock to take J.J. McCarthy. So now with the Falcons on the clock, there's no receivers available. I don't think they're going to go receiver. They have Rondell Moore now. They have Darnell Mooney. They have Drake London. Um, they have Kyle Pitts. They have B. John Robinson. They have enough offensive weapons. So at number eight, I think it is probably going to be uh, Dallas Turner here. And this leaves the Bears in an interesting spot. And you could very well trade back and get more picks. But at the end of the day... If none of these receivers are here and none of the quarterbacks are here, realistically, what team is going to trade up to get their guy? You know what I'm saying? And you can trade back. I don't know if you're going to net a second, though. Like, the only team I could really probably see trading up would be to be the Bengals for Brock or maybe... I don't know. I, I see that's what I'm saying. I struggle to find a team that's going to trade up and get give up premium capital if a quarterback or wide receiver is not there. So I'm going to do something a little weird here. I'm going to give Brock Bowers to the Bears. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that offense? Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Brock Bowers, Cole Komet, Gerald Everett, DeAndre Swift, Khalil Herbert. You put Caleb Williams in that offense? I don't see how they don't make the playoffs next year. So we have Olu Fashanu here, or we have the New York Jets on the clock, and I think Joe Alt is the easy option here. So now we have the Patriots on the clock, okay? They need wide receiver. It's not there. They need a tackle. It's not here. I believe um, their left tackle walked. I believe they re-signed their right tackle. So... What they could do is they can go Olu Fashanu here. Now that you have your left tackle, you have your right tackle, you're building up the trenches for whoever that rookie quarterback is going to be. Now we are at number 12 with the Tennessee Titans. I think you can easily go to Lisa Fuaga here, and then you have your right tackle, you have your center, and you have your left guard. You find your left tackle. You find your right guard, and you're set to go. You you have kind of rebuilt that line in basically a year. At number 13, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. Signing Christian Wilkins, in my opinion, takes him out of the running for Byron Murphy and Jerzon Newton. Now you have cornerback, I think, is really kind of the most important play. So I am going to give them Quinion Mitchell. At number 14, we have the New Orleans Saints. Now, with Byron Murphy on the board here... I think that would be a great pick for them. 
At number 15, we have the Indianapolis Colts. Give me Terion Arnold. You could also go... You know, I am actually going to go Jerzon Newton and pair him with Grover Stewart. At number 16, we have the Seattle Seahawks. I believe it is probably going to be... Um, you know, it could be Jackson Powers Johnson. It could be Troy Fontanu. But with Jared Verse sitting right here, might be a very easy pick. At number 17, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. I am going to give them Terry and Arnold. Give them an Alpha CB1, something they haven't had since Ramsey. 18, Cincinnati Bengals. Now, this is an interesting spot because they do need a tackle. So, I'm going to give them J.C. Latham to pair with Orlando Brown Jr. So, um, I just got a alert, funny enough, that says, there is buzz that J.J. McCarthy is the player the Giants want to take in this year's draft. So, maybe I'll do that tomorrow, and I'll give that one a try tomorrow. Don't know why I picked it up. I'm not going to drink it. At number 19, we have the Los Angeles Rams. Um, they kind of re-solidified their line. Avila's going to go to center. Um, so, they don't really need O-line, in my opinion. You know, you could give them a guy like a Cooper to Gene. I know they signed, like, Cam Curl. Um, so, to Gene, it kind of projects to a safety. But they do need a CB1. And I think any of these guys here could work. I also think investing with Leatu Latu would be nice. So I'm going to give them Cooper to Gene. At number 20, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, they need a center. They need DB. And I'm going to give them Nate Wiggins to pair with Joey Porter Jr. I'm going to give the Miami Dolphins Troy Fautanu because he can play any of the interior positions. And that's really kind of what they need. Now, with the Philadelphia Eagles here at 23, you know, I don't want to, th- I don't think they're going to go D line. I don't think they'll go linebacker. They could use a wide receiver. Do they, do they draft Jackson Powers Johnson? Do they build up on those trenches? Who is the next available corner here? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't love Kool Aid there. Um, this leaves us in an interesting spot here. Because you could go, the way the draft board has fell, I don't necessarily love it. So what I'm thinking here is, hmm, let's see if there's a team that might want to come up here. Let's see. So I think what we could do is we can move back. With the Dallas Cowboys, right? Just move up a couple spots. Give them maybe like... We'll pick swap. Hmm. We'll give them 56 and they give us 50. I don't know. That's like... Nothing crazy, but it's like you're only moving up two spots. So let's just force that through. And I'm going to give them Jackson Powers Johnson. Now, I believe you can take Brian Thomas Jr. Now, you have Brian Thomas Jr. You have a... Now, you have both tackles. And the reality is, whenever you throw that rookie quarterback in there, you're going to be in a better position. And it's very realistic that the Patriots could use that pick or or, or use like an early second on a quarterback. It's getting real bright, guys. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. I'm a I'm a actually we're good. It'll it'll go away. The sun just came out. Let's see here. There we go. So, now with 24, we have the Eagles on the clock. I got bright. Um I think the reality is, you know, they pick up, they move up a couple draft spots and <laughs> I don't know what you want to do. They they re-signed CJ Gardner Johnson. Um, they did sign Devin White, so I don't know if you know. Let's look at one, some of the wide receivers here. You know, Adnai Mitchell with AJ Brown and Devonta Smith would kind of be nasty. So now we have the Packers on the clock, and I've paired them with Tyler Newbin. I am going to give them Graham Barton, someone who can play any position on the interior and also tackle on a pinch. Number 26, I am going to give them Leatu Latu to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Arizona Cardinals, okay. They took Marvin Harrison Jr. They have the right tackle and left tackle now. 
they could use some interior help. But I am going to give them Kool-Aid McKinstry because they desperately need cornerback help. At number 28, we have the Buffalo Bills. Now, they're in an interesting spot here because I don't love the way the board has fallen. Um, You know, you could give them Zach Frazier because they got rid of Ryan Bates and they got rid of... <sighs> they got rid of Mitch Morse as well. So... This leaves them in an interesting spot because they do need CB help as well. Trey White's gone. <sighs> Give me TJ Tampa to the Buffalo Bills. At number 29, we have the Detroit Lions on the board. And they got DJ Reader. I don't know if they need that D-line help much anymore, um, especially in the first round. And, you know... They could use a CB, but I don't love Mike Sandstro in the first. I think it's a possibility because he's a Michigan guy and the way he plays, it just kind of fits like the Detroit's MO. Um, but maybe what we do here, we could go Tyler Newbin. I don't I mean, it's not out of the realm possibility. Pair him with like Brian Branch. Let me look at the Lions depth chart real quick and see and see what we're working with because Kirby Joseph and Melifonwu. Yeah, I don't know if you want to really ride with these guys. So let me try that then. I'm going to give them Tyler Newbin. At number 30, we have the Baltimore Ravens. And with the way they have kind of dissembled their O-line, I'm going to give them a Marius Mims. At number 31, we have the San Francisco 49ers. And I am going to give them Tyler Guyton. I think that makes a lot of sense for them. Now, we are going to trade out here. And we're going to do a easy little trade. Maybe give them like 180 or something like that. Now we have Bo Nix. So, the Patriots trade out of three. They accumulate a first. They move back to 11. They get another first at 23. And now they have two firsts going in to 2025. And they got their left tackle of the future, a wide receiver one, and a quarterback all in the first round. That would be a great haul for the New England Patriots. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't know ball, want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Let me know in the comments your favorite and least favorite pick from this mock draft. Let me know any trade scenarios you want me to try, any players you want to go to certain teams, and I'll try to make it work. Thank you guys so much. We're growing the channel every day. The mocks just keep getting more fun. So we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching.